up guys. I know this film re review is going to seem pretty rushed, but I have to go to work um, at 12 o'clock. It's 10.50 and honestly, I just slept the morning away because I was just that tired. <laughs> um, so, happy Black History Month! On my last video, I did say that I was going to do a romantic film review and a black history film review. Um, so, here I am. It's Friday, it's Black History Month, and right now I'm going to do my black history film review on a film that has to do with a bit of black, not just black history, but U.S. history in general. Um, it's a it's a movie came out in I think I want to say 2016 called Loving. Loving stars stars Joel Edgerton and I'm sorry, sweetheart, I cannot pronounce your name to save my life. Um, but they star as a her name will appear at the bottom of the screen. They star as. Mildred and Richard Loving, the couple that in 1967 won a Supreme Court case that ruled the misogyny laws in um, the United States are unconstitutional and that interracial couples have a right to marry just like anybody else. Um, so here's the, here's the thing. Before that 1967 ruling, after slavery ended and during the era of Jim Crow, um, there was a law, there was a misogyny law placed in the South that says that white people and black people could not mix. Now under this law, black men could die, black women could go to jail. Um, so could white men. Um, so with that law in place, um, certain states would not recognize marriage and in fact jail those who were married or living as married couples. Um, so Richard Loving was a white man, Mildred Loving was a black woman. They were pregnant in the time of this movie, at the beginning of the movie she was already pregnant. Um, and they went to Washington DC to get married there it was legal to get married but what they did was they turned around and went back to Virginia and somebody brought out that they were a married couple and they were living as a married couple in West Vir in Virginia <sighs> so long story short the police came arrested them they went to jail they could either stay in jail or they could leave the state for, I think it was 15 years. Um, so they came back so she could have the baby. Um, and then they got rearrested. <laughs> um, there, the lawyer pretty much said, Look, it's my fault. I mistakenly told her they could come back. And they left again. Um, now they stayed where they were in a African American community, inner city community, and I think it's Washington D.C. Um, for a good long time, and had two more kids. One of them, a little boy who was definitely not used to city streets, got hit by a car um, he survived but he got hit by a car and that prompted Mildred to say I don't care what happens my family needs to be safe we're moving back to Virginia they went back to Virginia they hid <laughs> they hid um, in Virginia but they also got in contact with um, Senator Kennedy at the time and 
his and their case was sent to the um, NAACP and a few other people who were working on the civil rights civil rights movement at the time, and their case was accepted, and it went from Virginia all the way up to the Supreme Court, and they won their case. Now, this is an actual case that actually happened in the United States. I made a video with my ex um, on, and it's on the vlog channel called Interracial Relationships or something like that. The link will be in the description below and also at the end of this video. Um, at the end card in this video about this particular case. Um, now, when they won the case, the misogyny laws across the United States were deemed unconstitutional, um, which means that because since 1967, because of the Loving versus Virginia case, um, interracial couples can legally marry and not have to worry about legal consequences. Um, similar to what happened a couple, a few years ago when gay marriage was legalized. Which is why I pretty much support the LGBT community and everything we do because, you know, we're kind of hypocritical, black folks, if we do not support other people who are being marginalized and penalized for being who they are. Um... So, some things that could, it's a really good movie, but now I have to talk about things that could be improved in the movie, you guys. Um, so I really did enjoy the storytelling of Mildred and Richard Loving, but one thing that kind of left me kind of wanting was the fact that it jumped right into Mildred and Richard being pregnant. How did they meet? How did they grow up? What were their what was their life like before Mildred got pregnant? What made them decide they wanted to get married? Was it because of the baby? Was it because they really did love each other? What happened? Because it opens up and you have this really lovely couple. There's a really pregnant woman. And then suddenly they make the decision. We're going to go to D.C. and get married. What? E e even if it's like brief snippets. Like it does a whole up thing. And there's like a brief montage of what happened to get us from these two people to these two people pregnant wanting to get married and then jump off into the main plot of the movie. It basically just throws us into the plot without any kind of spits or build up. We see Richard racing cars. We see them at parties. We see Richard deciding he's going to build Mildred a house. We see them decide they're going to go to the courthouse and get married. And that was like instant. That was like 3.5 seconds of exposition and then bam inciting incident come on people I love the movie but I want to know what how we got to this point in the movie to a point where the movie began it even some um, written exposition would be great to know how they got there now nah, we get Bam, she's pregnant. Bam, he's in love. Bam, they go get married. Come on, guys. I think we deserve a little bit of exposition there. Even if people should already know about the case, there are these young cats who don't know about the case. And that would be a good way to show them the progression that got them to the inciting incident and then where it went from there. Simple as that. Um, I love 
that's like the only problem I really have with the movie. Now, I really do love the fact that they had actors and they kept the actors looking as plain as humanly possible because in the 60s in the South, you did not have a whole lot of money to sit around and look glamorous and luxurious, hair done, makeup done, nails done, all the time. If you were one of those people, one of those people in the South that did hard labor, hard work, you were housewife and you were poor, you looked poor. You did not look rich, you did not drive fancy cars, you were poor. And I, I really, really want to applaud the hair and makeup and costume designers for showing this, for showing us that in the South, certain type of people were poor and the way that they made them as plain as possible. I mean, yeah, they still have makeup on, but they were not made up to look anything but themselves. It was beautiful. Costume people, you did a wonderful job too. It was amazing and I love it. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, so, on my lovely little rating scale, like I said, it's going to be kind of rushed. So, here it is. On my lovely little rating scale, um, I am going to give it a 4.5. Mainly because, I'm sorry. I need a little exposition of how we got from yeah. to yeah. Um, in the beginning because like I said it just opens up on Mildred being huge pregnant <laughs> and they're saying I'm going to build you a house let's get married y'all gotta give me a little more than that just on the real tip y'all have to give me a little bit just a tiny bit more than that so, if you love this video, like, subscribe, share, click that little bell and become part of the Wonder My Notification Squad. Um, please, 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 <laughs> um, comment down below, tell me what you like, what you didn't like, have you seen it, will you see it? Um, happy Black History Month, everybody. Like. Oh my god, happy Black History Month. It's already February. What is this business? It was just January. Now it's February. February is starting to go by really quickly. But happy Black History Month. Happy Month of Love. I'm coming back next Wednesday with another romantic movie. And next Friday, I might be in a different location with my next movie review. But I will have it, and I might even talk somebody into being a special guest. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. And we have a very special movie review coming up. Um, also, next week, um, I don't know. I might hold it in until the Friday after, but I might be a little bit too excited. And it's actually going to be a movie review on a movie that's already in theaters. And, and believe me, well, what will, will, will already be in theaters. Um, and believe me, there will be absolutely no spoilers because I have a feeling this is a movie you're going to have to go see for yourself and there will be no spoilers from me. You can go watch some of those other channels and get some spoilers if you want to, but me, honey child, no, I got you. You need to go see this and with no spoilers whatsoever. <laughs> um, so... Love you guys. Tell me what movie you want to see me do next. Like I said, comment, like, share, subscribe. Click that little bell to become part of the Wonderland Notification Squad. And I will see you guys later. Go check out my vlog channel. The link is in the description below. And it will also be on the end card. Go check out the video that I did about interracial relationships. Um, that's what, that talks more about this case. And then, <clears throat> please... 
come back to my channel for more reviews, for more short films, for more skits, all that good stuff. I love you guys. You guys are wonderful. Always remember, be kind, be brave, be awesome. And peace out. Love you, Wonderland. Mwah. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. We are the music makers. And we are the dreamers of dreams. Thank you.